Southern New England's country, Cat Country, 98.1. blow to the Jewish left on the gang if that already happened so fast and you like what and why did the price have to be paid the home of Patriots Monday and Friday 93.7 WEIFM and HD1 Lawrence Austin always live on the free Odyssey app FanDuel Sportsbook, your ultimate sports betting venue in Connecticut. Visit MoheganSun.com for more details. Now, Mud at Night on WEEI. On oh, a happy Thursday, Mud at Night, WEEI. A busy Thursday. Should be a fun 90 minutes or so up until a really, really good Thursday night football game. But I, I, I'm going to watch and listen to the entire thing. Texans and Big Eagles tonight. We'll break it down for the next 90 minutes. No, we won't. No, we won't. We'll listen to the game. We'll bet on the game. We got Jalen Hurts and fantasy football, but it's... Oh, 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 oh. ...is about the air quality result. ...but and union spokesman. We're spending more time away from our families. We're working longer days. We have shorter nights at home. And we're being paid wages negotiated in 2016. Pilots are pushing for significant raises and better quality of life provisions. They have a lot of leverage, says travel industry analyst Henry Hartvelt. You know, at the same time, while the airlines know they've got to be generous, they can't spend foolishly. Airlines are making money again, but an unstable economy could undo that. The building conflict is unlikely to lead to immediate disruptions, says law professor Michael Leroy at University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. It doesn't look like they're rushing out to get their picket signs today. Airlines, like railways, are subject to federal mediation due to their importance to the economy. So he says negotiations rarely lead to strikes. Rarely, but not never. I'm Megan McCarty Carino for Marketplace. Rarely, but not never. On Wall Street today, not so good. We'll have the details when we do the numbers. We've been trying this week to give you a sense of the story of this economy right now, the reality behind the data from one place, one city in particular, Buffalo, New York. This used to be a big manufacturing town, Buffalo did, so when we were there a couple of weeks ago, we headed about 15 minutes south of downtown to see that slice of the local economy. Hey, Matt, I'm Kyle. Nice Matt, to see you. How are you? Me too. Matt Damon is general manager of three businesses here. He co-owns up with his wife, Melissa. We met outside an honestly nondescript brown building on a dead-end street on a colder-than-usual October morning. All right, it's freezing out here. Yeah, inside. It's cold. I put on some protective goggles and walked into a giant room of concrete floors, machinery everywhere. It houses two of Matt's businesses. They're called Metal Locking Services and MMG Industrial. There are people working with giant machines that are like car-sized pieces of gear and out. This is like an old style machine shop manufacturer. Yeah, it's a mix of, of old style and new. But, uh, you know what else is great? This place smells like industry, which is a stupid oh, yeah. city boy thing to say, but it smells great. No, it's not. Um, right? My favorite thing, my oldest daughter just she used to love coming to the shop yeah. because you smell the oil yeah. and the mist. Yeah, yeah, yeah you do. Yeah, it smells like work, right? Yeah, it does. So, metal shavings? Look metal at this. shavings, yeah. There are 
about 25 people working at the three businesses on the site. Lowest starting wages the past year or so, $22 an hour with full benefit. Metal locking services is all about heavy equipment repairs on locomotive engines. Very niche business. Um, we're the only one that does it, the only one qualified to do it. Say more about what it is that you do, because one imagines locomotive repair as not very specialized. So, so, uh, as a guy who knows nothing about it, tell, okay. tell me about so, it. So there's two main locomotive manufacturers out there, uh, one being General Electric. They make the engine on cast iron. Yeah. We have a proprietary process to repair cast iron mechanically. No welding, no heat applied whatsoever. But with the uh, locomotive engine blocks being cast iron, we need to go out and fix them wherever they are. Sometimes they come here, sometimes we fix them out in the field. Yeah. And we are the only qualified vendor to do this repair. So if any GD engine fails around the world, we either have to go do it or it's got to come. That, that's, I mean, it's a niche thing. You've yeah. got a market, right? It's You've a got a ready-made market. Ready-made market. We keep the competition out of our knickers on that one because <laughs> of the validation process, the time it takes to get people trained to do this type of repair. So You guys have to be certified by GD, I guess, yep. right? Is that the yep. deal? Correct. So we own all the IP, it's our repair process, they can't copy it, and uh, we're in, entering our, I think, fifth consecutive no compete contract, which is a wonderful thing. So look, yeah, I bet. So this, this, what is this called, engine block, right? Yep, that's, a, and that's the crane case for the engine block for a locomotive press. And it's another, one, it's another 16? 16, 16 cylinder. Right. Yep. This thing got shipped here? Yep, they ship them here. It's got to weigh 5,000 pounds, 10,000 pounds. 13,000 pounds. 13, 000, 13, 000 pounds. pounds, yep. And actually today we have some coming in, some going out. Right. This one's a completed repair. This is getting ready to ship. Did you start out in this doing the actual work, or you've been, you've been in management the whole time? Uh, no, actually, I personally grew up in a steel fab shop in Pennsylvania, Did so you? I was a welder. Yeah. So I was welding by the time I was five, because my father owned the business. Five? Yeah, five. I got the scars no, to no, Nobody called OSHA on it when they hear this piece. <laughs> That's right. So uh, so I grew up in steel, but then as we look for a business to buy, uh, this was a natural progression. We do yeah. some fabrication here, but mostly it's machining. So I had to learn that side of the business for sure. Right, right. So, uh, tell me about the people who work here. So we have highly specialized, very technical skill sets. We cannot hire people and bring them in and plug them in. Right. It's 100% on the job training at our expense. How often do you think about inflation? Oh, we every day. When our guys travel, they get paid per diems, they get paid gas mileage, we pay for work boots, etc. All of that we have set pricing on because we're in a contract. Right. Three year contract. Oh, so man. the price we are giving our guys today, as health insurance increases, we have to eat it all. So we have to build that in and be forward looking as we establish our contract pricing. Are you worried? Oh, yeah, we're worried. I mean, on one sense, I'm worried about how are we going to cover our costs on our contract, 